welcome to On the Workbench. Today we're going to be looking at uh, making a lathe stand here. Maybe you call this a deluxe lathe stand that has room for many accessories and tools, a bed extension for a MIDI lathe, uh, and one all-in-one rolling center. This is based on some plans that were found uh, by Mike Levy. Uh, had made a video uh, of his project, uh, sort of similar to this. Uh, you'll see a number of differences between his project and my project. A uh, link to his will be uh, down below uh, in the description. Uh, stick with us on this episode of On the Workbench, and we'll show you how. Okay, so to start off with our lathe build, we're going to start off by measuring the height of our casters. In this case here, these are about four inches off the ground, because the important first measurement we're going to need is to be able to establish well, just how tall should our lathe be off the ground. So if we've got our tool rest up here, and where our tool rest is sitting, we're going to want that so our arm is not sitting up too high, that it's just at a nice comfortable uh, level so that when our forearm is down, that our hand is just right out in front of us. So right now this is about uh, about a foot taller than I would like it. So I'd like to drop it down about a foot, but you also have to then account for the height of your casters at the bottom if this is going to be on wheels. Um, so in this case here, I'll do a little bit of math, um, and I'll be right back. Uh, the inspiration for my lathe stand here comes from uh, Mike Laney, who's got a whole YouTube video about this, so I just did a quick screen grab of that. And I'm going to use that in my workshop here as I try to lay out my plans. It looks like based on my height, I'm going to want these legs to be approximately about 24 inches. Um, he made his out of 2x4s. I'm going to use 2x6s. I've got a bed extension for my lathe, so it's going to be a little bit longer, a little bit heavier. Um, it won't be exactly the same thing. I'm using uh, plate casters rather than just screw-in casters. I'll put a link to his video below in the description. Um, so it looks like our first key dimension is this is going to be about 24 inches tall. So I'm going to cut my I'm going to cut uh, four two by six legs uh, to 24 inches. Now to make my cuts at 24 inches, I've got my miter saw here set up. I place some auxiliary fences with some extra scrap wood. Place a stop block uh, 24 inches from the blade. So now I can go to town cutting uh, my legs. The next key measurement we're going to need is well, how long, or I'm sorry, how wide should the stand be? So I've got my lathe laid out. I've got the bed extension attached to it, and so when I measure this from end to end, the end measurement here from end to end is just about 56 inches. We might make this a nice round 58, just uh, for some easy numbers to have a little wiggle room. You'll note there is another support here that's uh, just past the two foot marker on the tape. And so we'll note that into account uh, when it comes to putting that together. The next measurement is going to be, well, just how deep does this need to be? And so if we go from front to back, the front to back measurement here is about 8 inches. So with an 8-inch front to back depth and our length known, now we can get together working on uh, the piece that this is going to set on. So the next step here is going to make more sense when I look here at the end of the lathe. You look at the width of my 1x6 lumber here, it's obviously too small, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, uh, use two of these and put them side by side, and then edge joint them uh, to be able to then line them up, and I'll use biscuits to reinforce it. So we're going to take and rip off the rounded section of each of the 2x6s uh, um, at the table saw. Now to make sure the boards line up, I've got my joiner out here, so I'm going to edge joint my two long boards together so I can have a nice perfect seam. So now with my two boards so now if my two boards lined up side to side, the next step is to put some layout marks on here so I can know where to place my biscuits. So I got my framing square and I've went down and made marks uh, about every uh, four inches or so. Uh, nothing too specific on this, just roughly here and there 
to be able to account for where I want the biscuits. And I use these to line up my biscuit joiner. Okay, now we're inside. I had to bring the wood inside for the top uh, place where the lathe's going to sit uh, to be able to do the glue and the biscuits. It's a little too cold outside for my glue to set up properly. So I got my wood lined up here, my marks together. And now when I was cutting my biscuits, I used or I, said, I used a setting on the biscuit uh, joiner for a number 20. And so I've got my jar of number 20 biscuits. And so I'm going to go down and do a quick dry fit with my number 20 biscuits. Okay, so now I've got the top. Okay, so I got the top of my lathe bed here, uh, all set up here. It's all glued. I've got the glue squeeze out here. I've got to scrape off. I'm going to use a small hand plane to do that, and then I'll come back with an orbital sander here just to be able to keep it all clean. So the basic idea on how this is going to go together is I'm going to have another 2x6 run the length of this here, but this is going to be turned vertically and go across the seam. So it'll be just like the web uh, on an uh, I-beam piece of steel. And then on the ends, I'm going to then uh, cut a, a uh, dado, or I guess a rabbit, across the end here to recess my legs down just a little bit. And that same depth of that rabbit is going to be the, the depth of the dado here. It's going to go the length of the bed in which the I-beam or the web of the stand is going to sit. So with the dado blade on the table saw, I'm now going to begin to, the process of trying to cut a dado down the middle. This is just a sample test cut here. Going down the length, I'll be able to slide it out. I'm going to make it a little less deep than this so that my the web flange here is going to be the, the mechanically interlocked with my support piece here. After my long dado has been cut, here's what the board looks like here. And now I can put a cross 2x6 in here to make a flange. The dado is just a hair wider than I'd like it to be, but I think it'll work. I'll come back in here and I'll be able to add uh, some more biscuits going the other way to reinforce it, glue, and maybe a couple pocket hole screws. And now the next step is going to be to cut the uh, dado, uh, or in this case here, the rabbits, to go the other direction here on the edge so that my legs here can all line up and so I cut that again to about an inch and a half in width to be able to make up for my lumber here. So now if I look at the ends you can see where I've got the groove here for the legs, and I've got the long groove here for the eye web for the eye for the uh, web support here. And I'm gonna come back with a chisel and just clean up some of these lines here from the dado blade. Uh, maybe I didn't uh, it wasn't given unequal pressure, but there's definitely a couple ridges here between some of the teeth. I did use a spacer between my dado blade, and that could be a uh, result of a couple spacers here, just trying to avoid the carbide teeth uh, biting into each other accidentally. Uh, so I got to clean that up here, and then we'll get to work on the legs. Using the miter saw, I've cut another two by six down here to make the same length as this here, so this will sit in that long data that goes down. I've now got the legs complete with uh, half lap joints here set here, so this is going to set into the groove here at the bottom. Then we've got the lap joint here at the top, and then we're going to have a cross leg that comes across here, and the other leg is going to go up right next to it, just like this. And so we have these two half off joints here, and then we'll get the cross pieces here. I've got those now cut down with my miter saw, and so now I've got to cut some more half lap joints, and the uh, pieces are going to run the, uh, the width of this. they be able to put my four casters on for the ends. So now I've got to cut those dados. Uh, so we'll be back after cutting those dados. So now using the speed square, I've laid out the marks for where my half lap joints need to be. And then line this up with the dado blade. One of the neat things with the speed square is the uh, end like that allows me to transfer my marks move them down vertically here so I can look at my alignment here when I'm trying to set up my 
uh, dado grooves as I'm going across here so I know exactly how to line it up because I'm going to have a couple stops here for getting this here because I need to maintain this gap in between to account for the separation of the uh, web flange that's up higher up um, above in the, web, uh, the stand here. So there's going to be a piece right here that's not dadoed out and the dado begins again and stops again. So as a result, I, this is one of those neat things with the speed square. So now I've got to get this going on the table saw. Now I've got a dry fit of one of the legs here. We've got the vertical legs here. And we've got the lap joints here going across up for the outside here. I've got my gap here for the, the count for the spacer at the top here. And this is just a piece of scrap right in there just to show that I can fit that through. And then at either end, the casters that I've got are actually wider than the 2x6. It's not surprising here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the leftover scrap here that I used. Um, that was, I was using to test my width of the dado for the uh, web of the support beam. I want to slice that off into pieces with the miter saw to be able to then create the plates that my wheels are going to mount in. So I'll be able to turn that into uh, four little pieces. I'll then be able to go through and then using that groove, that'll then mechanically attach into there and then I'll be able to screw that through the bottom and glue it. And so I should have some pretty solid connections all the way around. All right, so just uh, as we're looking through this here, this is just kind of a quick dry fit here, trying to get everything assembled here, trying to get uh, assembly going. Um, not ready for glue. i got to score off the top of this board here so I can fit in the dado at the top. Uh, so we're almost there. Just a couple small quick steps, and then I'll be going right to glue up. Okay, before I go ahead and put in the web piece and glue it in, I'm going to cut and drill just a couple pocket hole screws. Uh, really more or less to use as clamping because that can be a good way to clamp this in place. So I'm going to drill a couple pocket holes, probably about four, and I'll put down the glue and we'll be right back. When I look on the other side, I've got my web seated here, and I've got four places here for pocket holes, and we'll go ahead and put in the screws here, and we'll be using those screws, those screws essentially as clamps. And now with the ends here, I'm going to take the feet support and get the glue all spread for those so we can get those on. And so now I've got my end supports here done for the bottoms. i got the top here gluing up. I'll have to then glue the leg assemblies in my next step here. And that will be back in a few hours or maybe then the next day. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is we'll get the legs and attach uh, to the top piece here where I've got uh, the rabbits cut going up here. I'm going to use some pocket holes. It also just helps secure this more or less as a clamp to support the glue to hold this in place because I need to have it tight against this surface and against this surface. Uh, and so this is going to stay on all four legs and the four sides. So I've got pocket holes drilled uh, for each of them. i got them kind of marked out here a couple places here. Just in terms of laying it out, I ended up accidentally crossing a couple of the holes over. That should be fine as long as I just drill one before the other. The head should be recessed off uh, to a different angle. So those are really not so much there. Um, I mean, it, yes, the screws will have some support, but I'll have, but I'll have the glue there with it as well. Um, and that will act as a mechanical clamp. Now for the next part of my glue up here, I'm trying to put on the stretchers here. I've already got glue and I'm trying to set up the rabbits here. I've pre-drilled uh, the holes and countersunk them. And then I'm going to uh, add some wood screws here to go tighten up. i got some just plastic clamps here uh, to get this going. Okay, there's one side here. I'll still have to come back later and attach the casters up on top just for a sample of how that's going to look. That'll look something like that. But we're not ready for the casters yet. I've got to get the other leg assembly here together. Those are on. Now I can turn my attention to the other end, which is looking bare and blank, ready for my next assembly.
Now what I think you'll notice with the pattern that's set here in these pocket holes and you saw before the offset, that's going to allow so I don't have screws uh, hitting each other when I screw it from both sides. I've got one more leg to attach on the other side. Got all my pocket hole screws in here at the bottom. Come up here to the top, and we're gonna have to apply some glue and get the other leg set up here. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to show this angle, but I showed you this before, so you'll see me again in the next step. Uh, now I got the frame all set up here. Um, it's got a glue dry on the ends. Add the wheels, and we'll be able to put the lathe on. Then I'll be able to figure out the accessories. In the meantime, I had two pieces of scrap that were left over. Whenever I cut the top down to the right width by cutting off the strips. We got these two strips here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my biscuit joiner and put some biscuits in between those and put those back together and reassemble that into a stretcher to be able to go across the bottom right here all the way across the other side up there. And so I'm trying to minimize as much scrap as I've got from this. And so now back to the biscuit joiner. All right, I've used glue and biscuits and I've got the two scraps cut off from the center runner here all glued together, ready to use as my extra support brace. All i got to do is take this out of the clamps and I'll probably have to scrape down some of the glue squeeze out. Now with this, it's almost like a 2 by 3 I'll be able to put this into the center of the lathe stand and be good to go. Here's how the lathe stand looks now. This is, uh, it's been drying like this with the glue since, uh, for a couple days since uh, the last step. So we take the clamps off. Now we've got our stand. We get to put our runner in here uh, to have our, our uh, support brace across the bottom, and then we will be set. Having finished the glue joint, because these are uh, separate boards, there's just a little bit of a gap between them that they're not perfectly flush. So I'm going to run this across my jointer to be able to joint those edges together. So I've got a nice flush piece of lumber here um, to be able to replicate that. So we'll use the jointer and get that going. Now that I got the board all planed down with the joiner, uh, look at this here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just a little bit off the end of one end here so I can get this set up. And then I'll be able to put some pocket hole screws in here and go butt it in uh, right here into the center and we'll screw it into the ends to support it. So I've got this marked up here for where I need to make my cut. I'll go to the table saw and make my cut. If we look at the end that we sliced through here for what's cut off here, you can see we actually have a biscuit right here that we just sliced through on the one end. Now I've got my long member here. Now let's cut the length here. All I got to do is drill some pocket hole screws at either end. And so I've got the setup in my pocket hole jig and we will drill out our pocket holes. preparation for adding the runner here across the bottom, what I've done here is I've got a 90 degree corner camp clamp here that I've flipped upside down. I've got to be able to hold this at a perfect 90 degree angle at the end. And so I can have the glue in the pocket screws, we'll just put that right in. Yeah, then at the other end, uh, since I only have the one 90 degree clamp, I've got a four inch uh, squeeze clamp at the other end, just as a quick rest for it to be able to hold on. So next thing I need to do is we'll add glue to either end of the runners and then add the pocket screws and get this installed and let it dry. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to give this a light coat with my random orbit sander here. I have about 80 grit paper here. I'm going to come back and paint the, the uh, setup later. 80 grit should knock down anything high and low and just try to smooth out and remove any little bits here. So I'm just going to give it just a rundown with some 80 grit sandpaper. So 
Now to begin the finishing process here, I'm going to be using just some extra flat enamel here. I got this as one of the free samples that Ace Hardware puts out periodically. This is known as India Ink. Let's see if the camera can get that there. So essentially a flat black. I'll come back a little bit later and polish it up here or something a little bit easier to clean. And so we'll go ahead and get started uh, getting the base here painted. Now time to attach the wheels so that the paint's dried. In the course of trying to add the fourth caster, I accidentally split my block, so I'm going to glue that together and redo this here. This is a little oopsie. Now that the paint is dry on the lathe stand, now the next part is the exciting part of getting to attach the lathe to the lathe stand. So now I've done a dry fit and I've put the lathe onto the lathe stand. And so now I've carefully lined up where all the uh, bolt holes are going to go. And I'm going to come around using a scratch owl. And then I'll be able to poke some holes. So for example right here, so I want to pre-drill these holes. Uh, before I go ahead and screw in the bolt, otherwise I risk splitting out the wood. And so I'm going to end up doing the ones here for the lathe first. And then I'll add on the bed extension second to make sure everything's all nice and square. And so then we will then get started with drawing or drilling the pilot holes. With the lathe land, uh, uh, lined up just the way I like it in the lathe stand, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to use a drill bit here to pre-drill my holes. So now I've got this long extension. I'm going to put onto my drill. This isn't going to be super accurate because of the way the bit fits into here, but it should be fine to be able to get a, a drill bit uh, long here to be able to draw the, uh, dr uh, drop in the pilot holes I need for attaching everything together. So let me uh, go ahead and show you how I'm going to do this. I've already got one done. Now the next step is going to be to bolt this down. So I've got my lag screws here I'm going to be using. And then I've got an impact driver with an impact rated socket, impact rated extension, uh, and my 3 8 adapter here. So then I can simply just uh, drive these bolts in. And so we'll get going with that. Now the next step is going to be to come back and to secure the bed extension uh, to the end of the lathe. And so what I'm going to have to do, I lift the bed extension off, you can see there's a set of bolts here. So I'm going to be able to tighten up and square this up as well as there's a pair of set screws on top here to then help to level the bed here out so that the two sides are, are, uh, are uh, together and centered and at the same level. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments on that, connect the bolts together, adjust the set screws here, and then I'll come back and then set the holes in for the other end of the lathe.
now with that tightened up, let me take the tailstock here and if I loosen the tailstock, I can slide it down and I can slide it either way right across that junction with no problem. So that's exactly what I'm looking for for a nice fit there. Then now that this joint is all nice and square, I can drill out the holes and connect the end of the bed extension here uh, to the end of the lathe. So now here's where the lathe stand looks so far. Uh, we've got the lathe on the stand, but, you can, but now the next logical question is, where do all the lathe accessories go? So I've got a bunch of lathe accessories here. And just to be able to show you what all I've got, I've got a drill chuck. I've got a work arbor here for a buffing wheel. I've got a spur center, a live center. I've got the wrench uh, for my uh, chuck. I've got another wrench that goes with my faceplate. I've got a arbor here for pen turning. I've got a point remover for removing the point from either my live center or my spur center. I've got a knockout tool. I've got a set of dividers. Um, and then I also have a face shield. And then as well as my chisel set. Uh, so then I'm going to build an accessory rack uh, to go across the front here. And I've got a set of 1x4s uh, that I'm going to put into an L shape. Um, and the, those will be able to go right onto uh, my accessory shelf here. So I'll have those accessories right in front of me while I'm working. Okay, now for the accessories, I've got an accessory bar here cut to length. And I've got some of my lathe accessories here all laid out on the right side. I'm going to put my chisels on the left side. And I just need to be able to figure out the order. So I'm starting to mark these with a pencil uh, so then I can know exactly where to go. Uh, about a three-quarter inch uh, Forstner bit is perfect for drilling out the fit. Uh, my MT2 size uh, Morris taper accessories. Other smaller drill bits we use for other ones. And then for things on my face plate, I'm just going to use a dowel uh, that I'll be going in there, uh, as well as for my lathe chuck to be able to hold that in place. So now we're going to go to the drill press and drill some holes. Now I've got all my holes drilled out for my accessories on my lathe uh, accessory holder. And now on the other side over here on the left side is where I'm going to put my turning tools. So the next step is going to be to familiarize myself with the size of the tools. So if it turns out about an inch and an eighth size is what I'm going to need to be able to fit my largest gouge uh, through a proper slot and be able to seat it into uh, the tool holder. And I've got six tools, so I'll be drilling out six holes. Um, if you've got other tools, you anticipate adding a few more turning tools, you might add a few extra holes for future growth in your uh, turning tool kit, uh, collection kit. Uh, so now, again, back to the drill press to drill some more holes. Now I've got all my holes cut out, so I've got all the accessory holes, and i got the holes to be able to put my lathe chisels in, and then I'm going to now uh, drill some pocket holes. I've got another board of identical length. I'll drill some pocket holes in it so I can then screw this back and this to provide a support whenever I mount this into uh, the lathe stand, as well as some pocket holes on either side to be able to join it uh, to the edge of the lathe stand to be able to hold all the tools in place. Uh, but before I put it in, I'll be painting it. Uh, but I've got to drill the pocket holes to be able to assemble this together, so I've got a few more pocket holes to drill. And then I can assemble this, and then we can paint this. To keep my pieces square before I drill my pocket holes in, I've got this 90 degree angle vise uh, or clamp that I'm going to be using. Uh, and this is a wonderful little tool that comes in all sorts of uses, just like this, so I can keep this perfectly square as I drill in uh, pocket holes to fix these two boards together. Out of the 8 foot 1x4s that I used to make the tool holder rack, I'm going to make some L braces go inside. I'm going to rip these to the appropriate width. This is the scrap that I left over from there. So I'm going to rip it up the width, and I'll be able to make some angle pieces to help support the 90-degree angle here along the inside of the track. This is what it looks like when I've got it all screwed together with my pocket holes screwed. So now it's going to make a couple other uh, angular support pieces go in the middle. And so I'm going to start with by ripping down what's left of that scrap here on my table saw. Okay, now with uh, the pieces cut down on the table saw, I've got a bunch of corner pieces here. I'll pocket hole screw these. And so this is going to provide some support, again, uh, when the weight of the different tools are on here. You can see where I've got my uh, different lathe accessories here all laid out uh, appropriately. There's a couple dowels that will then line up for the face plate and line up for the chuck. 
And so I've got some extra supports around those places. I hope you have here. And I've got my cutouts here, so now I've got to drill some more pocket holes to be able to attach these to the corner here. Uh, if I was feeling a little more fancy, I could probably round over the edges here at the bandsaw, but I'm going to skip that and just, uh, since this is shop furniture, uh, it's fine with a little uh, corner there. Just so you can see in detail for how I connect to each of these pieces here, you can see where I've got four pocket holes in each cross piece, and they do cross, and you can see the whole pass that cross, but they go with no problem as each of these sides supports uh, go right down the line. Okay, now my tool holder accessory bar is in paint red, and so this is a nice uh, gloss uh, cherry red Valspar paint. Uh, with this painted now, I can go ahead and add this on to the light stand. With the rack now clamped into place, now I can go ahead and screw it in on either end uh, using some screws and my impact driver. And now with the accessory rack completed, all we, have to, all we have to do now is add on our accessories. So we'll put it on the plate. We've got a live center. We've got spur center. We've got a pen mandrel. Now some of these holes are a little bit larger than before, just because of the, we're a little bit smaller because of the paint. We've got a chuck for uh, our, and now we've got the chuck, and put the chuck key on. We've got a knockout that goes in there, our point removal tool that goes in there. Uh, we've got a key for our drill chuck, which goes here. We've got our drill chuck here. We've got our work arbor here, and we've got the wormwood screw for the lathe chuck there, and then all we have to do is add some chisels. And then now my chisels can simply go in Just like that, and now I've got all the tools I need for turning all right together in one quick center. And the final finishing touch, where does the face shield go? The face shield just simply hangs right there on the end of the tailstock. And so then that wraps up our build. I do have one extra uh, hole that I drilled, so if I want to add uh, perhaps a larger live center uh, or another... Uh, tool. I've got some expansion room for that. Otherwise, I can obviously drill out some more holes, but I just want to pre-drilled one extra hole. Uh, the final piece, which I'm probably not going to show on camera, is coming back with a quick uh, thing of spray paint and covering up some of the uh, silver screw heads to make those match in color. So I hope you enjoyed this project, and have a great day. Bye.